Okay, I think it's time to so start the information session for the international public job offer of the mathematical science team of weekend 21R10 and 21R11. So thank you for attending this information session. My name is Kenichi Banai, and I'm the team leader of the mathematical science team at Riken. And so, as you know, we are offering a public job offer. And so Riken is a very famous institute for science in Japan, and maybe physicists and chemistry, chemists and people like that know a lot about Riken. But unfortunately, mathematics not, have not played a big role at Riken in Japan for a long time. And so Riken is not well known to the mathematical community. So in order organizing this public offering, I consulted so a visiting scientist, Professor Makiko Sasada, so Sasada-san from the University of Tokyo, and also Professor Tomoko Takemura, Takemura-san from Nara Women's University, about how I should sort of advertise this position. And they suggested that maybe I should hold an information session for mathematicians because Riken is not well known to mathematicians. So here we are. And so thank you for coming. And and so I want to take this opportunity not just to talk about the position, but also about what research is at Riken is like and things like this. And so this is a webinar, so you cannot unmute yourself. So if you have questions, then please tell ageru raise your hand at the bottom or use the question and answer button like chat to ask questions and you can ask your questions in japanese too if you'd like and english is also fine so that is that and so i will start the slide and the presentation part we will be recording for future references to people who could not attend this session the q and a session afterwards it will not be recorded so you're free to ask questions this so i will start sharing my slides so we start so maybe about 40 minutes explaining and maybe 20 minutes question and answers later so yeah thank you again for coming to this information session first a bit of introduction about myself my name is kinichi panai and i'm currently the team leader of the mathematical science team at Riken aip I'm also a professor of mathematics at Keio University, which is a university in Japan, in Yokohama. And my specialty has always been arithmetic geometry, so pure mathematics, nothing to do with artificial intelligence. And I liked special values of Hasse-Weyl L functions and block valence and cutting conjectures concerning these special value of Hasse-Weyl L functions. And our team is the mathematical science team is a team at Riken consisting of pure mathematicians and also theoretical physicists with the aim of attacking mathematical problem arising in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is a picture of our joint math team seminar that we held. It was the first such meetings and yeah, it is joint with the Ota team in Osaka and here's a picture. And the position that we're seeking, we are seeking two positions. One is for female research scientists or female senior research scientists. And the other is for research scientists or senior research scientists. And so it's two position, both deadline registration October 15th, final deadline is October 21. So please keep in mind if you want to apply. So it's two different positions. So if you'd like to apply to both, then please apply to both. And in today's information session, I'd like to explain four points. First is introduction to Riken and the AIP. So Riken is a very famous institute in physics and chemistry and things like this in Japan. As I said, mathematics, it's not so famous to mathematics. So I want to explain what Riken is to the mathematical community. And then I would like to explain our team, the mathematical science team. Then third, I would like to explain about the public job offer. And afterwards, we'll have the question time. And please use the Q&A below, which is sort of like a chat that you can ask questions. Yeah, you can ask questions anonymously if you'd like, or you can raise your hand 
and then you can then we can unmute you then you can just ask your questions asking the questions in japanese is also okay so あの、質問したければあの、日本語でもあの、全然大丈夫なんで、あの、いつでもあの、質問いただければと思います。Okay? So, first, introduction to Riken and the AIP. So, what is Riken? So, Riken in Japanese is Rikagaku Kenkyusho. So, it's a research institute dedicated to fundamental research in the natural sciences, including physics, chemistry, biology, medicine, engineering, informatics, and more recently, mathematics. So, I mean, it's a very old institute where Suzuki Umetaro founded the vitamins and things like this. And then maybe you've heard of Fugaku or originally K or Fugaku with the supercomputers and things like this. But mathematics is a very recent addition to Riken. And Riken was founded in 1917 so then in the world, for example, in Germany, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, Wilhelm Kaiser, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, now the Max Planck Institutes were created, and also in the US, the Rockefeller Institutes and the Carnegie Institutes, and then also in France, the Louis Pasteur Institute. So all around the world, there were many famous institutes being built, and in Japan also, they wanted some institute for pure research. And so it was founded in Riken in 1917. And also Japan is a very centralized bureaucratic country. Riken took a very different course in 1922 when director Okochi then decided to reform the system at Riken and to give very big autonomy to researchers. So. So each research group were given a very large discretion to how to manage their funds and what kind of research they wanted to do. So there was a very strong tradition of autonomy for researchers at Riken. And because of, this, because of this reform, there were many research that led to building many profitable inventions, for example, like the vitamins or Riken Wakame-chan, which is sort of wakame that you put in miso soups and you know, things like this. So many Japanese companies like Riko and Kyohako, they were built on technology built at Riken. So Riken had a very large revenue where they could use the revenue for whatever research they would like. So for a long time, Riken was known as the paradise for researchers. And so there's a very strong tradition of autonomy and doing research that you really like to do. Unfortunately, during World War II, some of the physicists worked on the nuclear program in Japan, and the US government decided that the Riken should be split up into groups. And the Riken that we have now is the research part. It was initially private, but in 1958, it become, became a special public corporation. And now currently in 2015, it became a national research and development agency under the Japanese government. However, even after this transformation, I think Riken really has a very strong tradition of autonomy where the researchers work independently to do what research they think is the best. And that is what I really like about Riken. And Riken and mathematics. So when Riken was founded in 1917, the first director was Kikuchi Dairoku, Dairoku Kikuchi. So I think he was the first Japanese mathematician to become a professor of mathematics at University of Tokyo. So beforehand, all the professors were foreign. And so Enrique had as first director a math as a mathematician. Unfortunately, he died just after one year in office. And afterwards, there were no mathematicians at Enrique for a very long time. This all changed in 2016 when two things happened. One was the creation of ITEMS by Director Hatsuda, the Interdisciplinary Theoretical and Mathematical Science Program, which was an extension of ITES, which was another program that hatsuda san was doing, but they added M, mathematics, into the program and hired Takashi Tsuboi, a mathematician. And also the AIP, Center for Advanced Intelligence Project, or Center, was also created in 2016. 
And so AIP started out as a center for artificial intelligence in 2016. So in Japan, there are three big centers of artificial intelligence. AIP is one of them, and it is closest to pure theoretical research concerning AI. So this is a picture of the Nihonbashi office. It's in the building of Koredo Nihonbashi. And so this is Raiden, our supercomputer. And because AIP wanted to welcome mathematicians, and I told them that mathematicians like blackboards, at the common room of our center, there is a blackboard to indicate that AIP really welcomes mathematicians, especially if you're mathematicians. And so what is the AIP itself? So AIP is a center, but it's also part of the MEXT AIP project. MEXT is the Ministry of Education, blah, 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 in Japan. And so it is a 10 year pro program that started in April, 2016. So the mandate of the AIP is 10 years until March, 20, 2026. And the mission of the AIP project is as follows is to develop next generation AI technology to accelerate scientific research. So not just AI, but using AI to do research at RECAN or solve socially critical problems or consider ethical, legal, and social issues of AI and also to develop the next generation of AI researchers. So not just doing research, but making sure the next generation of researchers can also grow. And our mathematical science team, the biggest part we play is in the first mission to develop the next generation of AI technology. So that is a very brief introduction of RECAN and the AIP. So are there any questions? Is everything okay? Yeah, please use the Q&A Q &A, or please raise your hand if you have any questions anytime. And so there are three research groups at the AIP. One is the Artificial Intelligence and Society group, which does the ethics and the social part. The other is the Goal-Oriented Technology group, which does applications of artificial intelligence into real-world problem. And our team is at the very bottom at the Generic Technology group. And this group does fundamental research in very theoretical part of artificial intelligence, and we are here. So yeah, our main goal is not ourselves to do applications of AI, but through collaboration with the other groups, for hopefully in the very far future to contribute to AI technology. And each research group has various teams. Our generic technology group currently has 16 teams. So one team is like one lab, and one mathematical, our mathematical science team is one team in this generic technology group. Okay, so everything okay up until here. So explanation about the mathematical science team. So in 2016, I had no experience except pure mathematics, and I was a pure mathematician, and I never expected that I would become a member of the AIP. So I remember reading a newspaper article about the new AIP and director Sugiyama-san being the director in his early 40s and very exciting and things like this. And I had this very strange feeling of, wow, I, this is exciting and I wanted to work with Sugiyama-san, but I've never met him and I didn't know anything about AI. So I thought maybe in another life I could do this. So I was very surprised a few weeks later, I got an email from Sugiyama-san asking me to join the AIP. And after telling him that I'm a pure mathematician, I don't know anything about it, artificial intelligence. So he asked me to organize a team of mathematicians to achieve a breakthrough in AI. So what does he mean? So he explained to me that behind each breakthrough, there is a mathematical theory like statistical inference or optimization theory or manifold theory, there are something which contributes to machine learning. And so if it's mathematics that everyone thinks that can be used for AI, then it's already done. So what he wanted was a breakthrough with some new mathematical theory that maybe no one has heard of yet. 
And I'm an arithmetic geometer, and I thought about what can arithmetic geometry do to artificial intelligence. And at first, I didn't have any idea what I can do. So then that was sort of an indication that that would be maybe a new mathematical theory to contribute. So I decided to join the AIP. And starting to work at AIP, I realized that my experience as an arithmetic geometer helped because the block valence and Cato conjecture, it was a very deep conjecture in arithmetic geometry and used very different kinds of mathematical tools, not just one. And in order to solve the conjecture, we needed to do collaborative research with mathematicians of very different fields. So at the AIP, doing machine learning, so usually just having one mathematical something to do machine learning is not enough. So it's a very it's a big problem. So collaboration with mathematician of different fields was very, very necessary. So this having lots of people work on a project is the kind of experience I had and it helped in building the mathematical science team. And the current members includes myself as a team leader. So right now we have five research scientists or postdoctoral researchers in our lab, as you can see from very different mathematical backgrounds. Riken also has what is called a special postdoc researcher position, which is also a postdoc position. And we have three researchers more close to number theory or arithmetic geometry. And then there are there is a program called the Junior Research Associate Program at RECAN, where PhD students come to do research at RECAN and our team. And our team currently has six PhD students. Also, I've asked many faculty members, mathematicians in Japan, to become visiting scientists of our team. So we have mathematicians in arithmetic geometry, algebraic topology, differential geometry, graph theory, dynamical systems, real analysis, probability theory, optimization statistics. So many different mathematicians are helping out with our team. So we have right now one PI, eight postdocs, six PhD students, and 13 visiting scientists. And also some part-time students, PhD students are also part of the time team. So we are a team of really various backgrounds in mathematics and theoretical physics. And the approach we take is, is that, so machine learning, so it uses many types of mathematics and not one person cannot know everything about mathematics. So the purpose of our team is to connect the wider mathematical community to top, top, topics in machine learning so I understand my mission to be how to bring in this vast know-how that the mathematical community holds, how to bring this into the machine learning area. And so the members of our team, they of course can help out with their specialty, but yeah, it would be nice if they could draw in more people into this field. And so what kind of research? The first example, I'll talk about a little bit about the first example that we did. So when doing research, what, how we started doing research in machine learning was that, so everyone had background in pure mathematics and didn't know very much about machine learning. So we asked many team leaders at AIP to come to our lab and explain what they're doing. And then after hearing what kind of problems, mathematical problems they were having, asking members who are interested to work on that project and things like this. And the first example we were given was from Kawahara-san, so a postdoc called Fuji-san in Kawahara's team. So he wanted to know about how to analyze time series data and what is time series data. So it is some data points moving with respect to time. And I think the first example he gave was of a basketball team. So if you have a basketball team, the members move around freely. But so the conjecture was that 
one is able to distinguish between a good team and a bad team by looking at the movement of the team, members of the team. And so such data, time series data, could be modeled as movement of points in a space. And so how to classify movement was one of the problems that was given. And so when the movement is linear and stable, so if the points are just vectors and the movement is given by multiplication of a matrix, then there were many research. So like the AIMR, ARMI a process of models and things like that, which gave, which modeled these things and how to differentiate it between these two by using something called distance or angle. So there were some research concerning this. But what about a nonlinear or non-stable case? And so Kawahara-san, so the idea that Kawahara-san was to use, interpret the time series data as a form of a dynamical system, and it's a nonlinear dynamical system, but his idea was to use reproducing kernel Hilbert space and Koopman Brown Frobenius operator on this space to analyze these spaces. So his first idea was in this paper here. And so how does this work? So reproducing kernel Hilbert space, if you have a kernel function, then you can embed these nonlinear non -linear dynamic system into a linear but infinite dimensional vector spaces. And then instead of the nonlinear operator, you have a linear operator called the peron frobenius operator. And then you can analyze the movement here. So it becomes linear and in some sense simple, but the space is now infinite dimensional. So you need harder mathematics to approach this program. And so given this problem, I asked members of the team who are interested. And so Isao Ishikawa, Yuka Hashimoto and Masahiro Ikeda, who were then members of my team, decided to work on this problem. And so, yeah, so what can we do about nonlinear and non-stable case? So the team succeeded in defining a certain distance, which really measures these movements, the difference of these measures of movements in a nonlinear or non-stable case. And so this result was accepted to the New RIPS conference in 2018, and this really became the first result, big result of our team. And so this was just a start, and so the research has been expanding, getting bigger and bigger, working with Kawahara-san. And so I think it was in 2019 that Kawahara-san got a very large CREST grant, Operator Theoretic Data Analysis of Complicated Dynamics, and it's integrated with relation with mathematical models, and yeah, working to really work on to generalize this theory. And relation to higher mathematics has becoming more and more clear. So yeah, now we can use C star algebras to to analyze cases where there are not just one time series data, but multiple time series data. And also when doing these things, the boundedness of the operator is a very important factor. And so one needs really strong mathematics to prove boundedness of these operators. And then in real world systems, there's always the random noise. So that one needs probabilistic arguments to sort of cancel or understand how to deal with these things. So many different areas, mathematical areas are coming in contact with this result. And so, yeah, it's really interesting how things will turn out. Now, there are many, many other examples of research starting out this like this. And so here's just a little bit of what is going on. So on the web page of AIP, there's the AIP open seminar. The video is also, you can watch. And so please watch the video of the mathematical science team, which was held in March. Then you can see what the members of our team are doing. One more thing. So more recently, so we're working with MT Khan, of also a team leader at AIP, concerning a project called Bayesian duality. And MT's idea is that every learning theory 
can be interpreted as sort of a duality. And this sounds very interesting. And but currently it's not at all mathematically rigorous. So how to make this theory mathematical rigorous is I think a very interesting problem. I mean, there are many, many interesting problems that mathematical problems I think that we can think about. So, so relation between discrete things and continuous things is I think one big problem in mathematics. So data is always finite and discrete, but good theory usually is continuous. So how to reconcile the two, that's also a big topic. So I think, you know, working at the AIP, what I realized was that, so topics coming in artificial intelligence and machine learning, the problems are very, very mathematics. I think sometimes even more mathematics than physics. And so I think there are many interesting problems that mathematicians can really work on. And so what kind of activities do we do? So we hold a weekly team seminar during the semester where, so once a week, we maybe one or two people talk about what they've been up to. And then, so once a year, we held the AIP math joint seminars with other math teams at the AIP. So we held one in 2018, 2019, and 2020. Unfortunately, we could not hold it this year due to COVID, but I hope we can start doing this again after everything settles down. Or maybe do something online or change. Yes. And so, yeah, I wanted to do this information session, not just for the this position, but sort of introduce our weekend and our team. So there are other ways to join our team. So if you would like to be a postdoc researcher, there's a program called Recan SVDR for postdoctoral researchers. And the application deadline is April every year. Also, there's a program called JSPS Postdoctoral Fellowship in Japan. And then usually you get some postdoc position at the university using this. But you can also apply to Recan for this position if you're interested in our team. And then there is the JRA, Junior Research Associate Program, where PhD students come to Recan to do research. And so you get some fund every month to do this. And if you're a PhD student and who is interested in, in our team, then please apply. The deadline is November. But so so it's a joint application with the postdoc student and our team to Recan. So if you're interested, then please contact me earlier than November. And also there's the visiting researcher program. So for tenured faculty who wants to collaborate with us, yeah, if you find our research interesting and if you really want to work on something, then please contact us so we can do this. So that is the brief introduction of our team. Are there any questions up until here? Is everything okay? Okay. So thirdly, the public job offer that we introduce. So the position we are introducing is again a female research scientist or a female senior research scientist. That's the first position. And the second position is research scientist or a senior research scientist. And these positions are indefinite term positions. So it's a tenured position and the limit of contract is retirement age. So I think retirement age is 60 at Recan and it can be extended until 65. So it is a position like this. I should mention that so it is an indefinite term position, but so Rican does not expect you to be a research scientist, then be a research scientist until 60 years. I mean, it would be good if you think about your career and try to move up your position. So you know, moving up positions within Rican or applying to so associate professor or professor position in your university. So advancement of career is very much encouraged, but it's an indefinite term position. So you can do this at your own discretion, your own pace. 
And a little bit about the position at Riken. So Riken has a distinct name for its position, which is different from the university. And so here is the list. So team leader is like a professor at the university, unit leader is like the associate professor. And the positions that we're offering this time, so senior research scientists and research scientists, so they're about the same as lecturer or assistant professor at the university. So these are positions, not the PI positions, but one, so when you get these positions, you're in my lab, so you're member, you would be a member of my lab. So it's not a PI position, but it's a little bit more senior than a postdoctoral researcher position. So it's a little bit confusing because in Japanese university, postdocs are usually referred to as a kenkyuin. But in Riken, postdoctoral researchers are referred to as a tokubetsu kenkyuin. And so a research scientist in Riken is called a kenkyuin. So a researcher, so a kenkyuin in Riken is a little bit more senior than a postdoc at the university. So that is sort of where the positions are. But it's this is just a very rough equivalence. So yeah, I mean, the details, it's not so much. So, so yeah, if you have a PhD, or if you expect to get a PhD, then please, by me, all means, apply. If you're already an associate professor or professor, then you're probably a little bit you're already a PI, so maybe this position is not for you, but but if you're interested, then of course you can apply if you want to. And one more thing about the position. So I said, as I said, the AIP has a 10-year mandate. So it is destined to end at March 2026. 20, so it's not decided that it will end definitely. So there's a chance that it will be extended. So many centers in Riken are extended. But yeah, so what is the role of the AIP mathematical science team is that it's the team of initial placement. So the position that we're offering is a permanent position of Riken, independent of AIP or the mathematical science. So the position will be valid even after possible restructuring of the AIP, things like this. And if there is some restructuring, then you can choose what, where you want to go to, like items or other research centers within the Riken. I mean, artificial intelligence and also mathematics, I think, is a very important topic. So I think there will be always need for someone to do this at Riken. And this position was approved by Riken headquarters. So the reason that it was approved was that this kind of position will be necessary for a long time in Riken. But yeah, I, what I have to say clearly is, is that AIP, right up until now, it's the mandate is until March, and we don't know what will happen exactly afterwards. So that is something to keep in mind. And as I mentioned, the role of our team is to work on machine learning and AI, but you yourself, you don't have to do everything because doing machine learnings, you have you need a lots and lots of mathematics. So yeah. If you connect with visiting scientists and the wider mathematical community and get help from them and then work on machine learning and that's also okay so yeah so. So maybe not doing everything on your own, but a collaborative kind of work, I think is usually very successful. And so what kind of people do we want so. We are the mathematical science team, so we want people who have research experience in mathematics or mathematical sciences. And research experience in AI would be valued very much, though so it's not a requirement. And what is important is willingness to collaborate and work in mathematical aspects of AI. So that is the kind of people we want. And one other thing that is very important to me is, is the understanding of the importance of diversity, and I think it's a must. So working in a very diverse environment like the AIP, then you have mathematicians from very different areas. I mean, it's very, it's very important to understand the differences between each people. So some people like to do things very, very rigorously. Other people are full of ideas and very not rigorous, but 
explorative. You know, some people like to really think it out very slowly. Some people want to re have really quick reactions to things. And I mean, yeah, these strategies, some work for different problems. And if you don't know how to solve a problem, then which strategy is good, you cannot know. So being respectful of very different viewpoint, I think is very important to do such collaborative research. So again, understanding of the importance of diversity is a must. And as you realize, one or of the positions that we're offering is for female only. And the reason that we offer such position is, is that gender is another form of diversity. And I think being able to collaborate in a very diverse area, I mean, you have to have a community which is welcome to diverse type of people. And so again, yeah, understanding of the importance of diversity is something very important to me. And I think it's something important to do collaborative work like this. And the obligation, so what is the obligation is to conduct your own research yeah, in mathematical aspects of artificial intelligence. And again, Riken has a very strong tradition of independence of researchers. So I don't tell you you have to do this or you have to do that, but we expect that you're motivated enough that you find something that's very interesting and collaborate with other people to reach that goal. So that is what you have to do. And other obligation is maybe organization of seminars and workshop outreach of team. So if you are especially a senior research assistant, then you're very close to the PI. So some organizational work is expected. So important comment is that there's no teaching duty. So RECAN is a research institute, so there's no teaching, no mandatory teaching. And there's minimal administrative duty, so probably you don't have to go into meetings like this. So that's the job of the PI. And so if you are a member of the team, then your main obligation is to conduct your own research. And the work location. So my team is located at Keio University Yagami campus. So the address is here. It's about 15 minutes walk from Hiyoshi Station over the Tokyo Toyoko line. And so here is the picture of the building, the map of the campus and the weekend room. So we have a room for a weekend at Yagami campus. So currently due to COVID, everything is online. So initially, I think many things will be online, but after everything gets back to normal, then I think you'll work here. Okay, so that's about what I prepared today. So if you have any questions, then please ask. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention.